with that out of the way, our next question also comes to us through another one of the tech forums, which I frequent regularly. This question reads, how do I use a multimeter? That's actually a pretty good question, because odds are most people don't know how to use their multimeter. So, I'll show you. I'm going to try to keep things pretty simple here. There are two main types of multimeter that you're going to find uh, that are pretty commonly available on the market. Uh, Non-auto-ranging and auto-ranging multimeters. The auto-ranging ones tend to be a little bit more expensive because rather than having a million different options on dial here, um, it'll automatically select the best range for what it is that you're working with. For example, if you're trying to read DC voltage and what you're expecting is a voltage of about 12 volts or so, um, it'll automatically set it to the appropriate range rather than, for example, with this unit, or if you had it set to the 1000 volt range, the kilovolt range, and you were looking for something that was only 12 volts, your reading might seem a little screwy. Or it may not show up at all. Due to the price difference between the two, I'll be spending most of my time on the non-auto-ranging multimeter, since it tends to be the type that people have the most questions about. This right here is the non-auto-ranging multimeter. As you can see, there are a whole lot of options on the dial. Over here is the auto-ranging multimeter. Not a lot of options because it handles the ranging on its own. Let's start with just taking a voltage reading with the non-auto ranging unit. All multimeters should include a set of test probes. They look like these. One will be black, one will be red. Now for pretty much all of the readings you'll be taking with your, um, with your multimeter, the black probe will connect to the port labeled COM or common or ground or it varies depending on manufacturer but the convention is for it to be labeled COM. So you connect your black test probe like that, or like that, just to get it out of the way. And your red test probe you connect to one of these ports depending upon what test you're going to be doing. This port right here, for example, is for measuring voltage, resistance, and frequency. Uh, this port right here is for measuring amperage, but within the milliamp scale, and this port right here is an unfused port that can support reading uh, of current up to 10 amps. So obviously if you, if you need to read or if you need to measure a current which is in excess of the, uh, the 200 milliamp limit for this jack, you want to do it over here, otherwise you're going to blow the fuse in the unit. Also, if you exceed 20 amps for 15 seconds max on this particular port, you'll blow up the multimeter. Important things to keep in mind. But anyway, since we're going to be measuring voltage, we're going to connect the red probe, the positive probe, over here. Over here, you have your DC voltage measurement settings and the different scales you can select. Because we're looking for something that would be around 12 volts, while the 200 millivolt scale is not appropriate, neither is the 2 volt scale, we want the 20 volt scale. So we'll turn it to the 20 volt scale, turn the multimeter on. Um, the order there doesn't matter, you can adjust scale uh, while the multimeter is on. As you can see, the decimal point just jumped over a space. Uh, and if you go to the kilovolt range, well, then it, uh, your decimal point goes away because this becomes your entire range. You can see I can jump it around there. First thing we're going to do is take our negative lead, color-coded black, and insert it into the back of the connector. This is essentially our ground lead. Then we'll take our positive lead and connect it, put it into the positive side of the connector. Now once we've successfully inserted the probes into the connector, we'll, be, we'll get a voltage reading here. Um, keep in mind, when you're measuring voltage, you're connecting the multimeter in parallel with the circuit. So your circuit runs through here, connected to the power supply, this is running in parallel with the fan. And you can see that it's reading 11.95 volts. Well, let's adjust that up to 12 volts here. There we go, 12 volts. So now the fan is receiving 12 volts. And you can verify that with your multimeter. Additionally, with the probes connected like this, you can read the voltage drop across a connector which at the moment is reading 0.2 millivolts. When measuring current, it's important to remember that your multimeter needs to be connected to the circuit in series, not in parallel. When measuring voltage, you're in parallel. When measuring current, you're in series, okay? We're going to be setting this multimeter for the 10 amp scale and connecting to the 10 amp unfused 
um, current reading port. Uh, the reason for this being the fan that we're testing, the current draw will not be particularly small. We're looking at a couple tenths of an amp, which will be picked up just fine, with absolutely no risk of blowing any fuses. So, this particular setup I have made very, very easy to measure current because, well, I use it for that frequently for pumps and such. So, I'm going to undo some of my connectors here and hook the multimeter up in the circuit here in series rather than in parallel like before. So, with everything set up, we're going to turn on the power supply which is still set to 12 volts, as it was last time. And you can see it is reading a current draw of 0.17 amps. So, that would be the current draw of this fan right here, at its current voltage setting. Now, as you can see, if we turn up the voltage and make the fan spin faster, its current draw increases. So now we're probably touching 16-ish volts, and it's brought it up to, two, to 0.23 amps. Bring the voltage back down again, and we're back down to about where we were before, 0.17 amps. Multimeters can also be used for measuring resistance. So just for the sake of example, I have a resistor here. Just change the multimeter to the appropriate scale, and you can put one probe on either side of the... Um, the resistor or the component you're trying to, to check the resistance of. So again, in parallel. And you can see this resistor has a resistance of about 33 ohms, which is right where it should be. Uh, this can be used to test the resistance of all sorts of things. Another neat capability of the multimeter is the continuity test. This will allow you to check for continuity between two points in a circuit. It will give you a tone when you have continuity. Like that. So for example, if I want to make sure that there was continuity between this end of this wire and this end of this wire, I can put one probe in here and one probe here. I'll get a tone, indicating that there is continuity. This test is very useful uh, for deciphering pinouts of different wiring harnesses and that sort of thing. Multimeters can also measure capacitance, which as far as setup and execution goes is pretty much the same thing as measuring the resistance of a particular component. Now to give you an idea of how nice and or useful uh, auto ranging can be, we're going to go ahead and measure frequency with this multimeter right here. So we'll set it to the appropriate mode. And let's see, we'll turn on our old function generator here. And let's see... Let's do a sine wave of somewhere around 350 hertz. So hook up our probes to the appropriate spot. And there we go. You can see we're registering about 350 hertz there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bump that up by a factor of 10. We're going to jump from 350 hertz to 3.5 kilohertz. As you can see there, the, the multimeter automatically adjusted the scale it was using, so now it's reading 3.471 kilohertz instead of the 350 hertz that it was reading previously. And I didn't have to touch the multimeter at all. And there you have the basics of using a multimeter. Well, that's about it for this episode of PQA. Thank you guys for the questions, and remember, keep them coming. You can send them to questions at petristech.com or twitter.com slash ptpetra. should be right up here somewhere. Also, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys next week. So yes, we're at the racetrack today.